Hey everyone, welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm Acacia Courtney. It is an absolutely gorgeous Wednesday in South Florida as we kick off the week of the Phasic Tipton Fountain of Youth coming up this Saturday, February 29th. We have a lot to look forward to this week and that does include 10 races on this Wednesday afternoon. Let's head up to track announcer Pete Aiello for track and weather conditions. Fountain of Youth Stakes Week gets underway with a Wednesday program in South Florida. Temperatures a bit warm. We're expecting a cool front here tomorrow. Temperatures in the mid 80s here this afternoon. A sunny sky, a fast main track, a firm turf course, and a guarantee in the Rainbow Six. We kick it off on the turf at five furlongs. Maiden claimers in for $25,000. Scratch the four and 14, and then a gate scratch of the six. Wardman, off time favorite, was number seven, Young Raymond. Racing at Gulfstream. All except for Putman, who was off in traffic toward the back of the field. Young Raymond away quickest, and he'll clear off to lead by a length and a half. You're out of control. Moves to take second at the inside. Happy Danza is now third. Splitting horses to take fourth is Palace Kid. Back to the inside in Pump Room. Length and a half to Putman. Then swipe left. A length in front of Machiavello. Newcomer Officer Country's away uh, second last. And the trailer is Fuego. Around the far turn they go. Young Raymond at three to two. He's the target. Through an opening quarter of 21 seconds flat. Palace Kid looms up alongside now second. Far outside goes Elite Mission into third. Putman will have the decision to make. He'll go four wide from fourth. Happy Dan says next. And they're at the top of the stretch. Young Raymond off the turn with the lead. He leads now by two. Second is Palace Kid down the center and Putman toward the rail and Happy Danza. 16th to go. Young Raymond is almost home. And Young Raymond will deliver on the three to two promise. He'll win by five in the end. Putman with a good effort. He was up for second. Third was Palace Kid. And then Happy Danza. 56 flat. Number seven, Young Raymond backed into the favorites role after the scratch of Wardman, but he did not disappoint as he went gate to wire under jockey Amisael Haramil, trainer Gilberto Zerpa, and owners Gelf and Steve Farr, and the Jay Stable. Young Raymond beats Putman, shook loose late to get up for second. We go to the second race now, start of the early pick four, made in claimers in a one mile trip. Price tag here was 12,500. Race favorite was number two, Beach Traffic. And they're off. The favorite was away cleanly. Beach traffic from down toward the inside, but Iron Drill is quicker to begin. In the center, Took a Cab is moving up to take over the lead. Took a Cab leads with Brian's Avenue on the outside. Down at the inside in dry land from third. Prefontaine is in early fourth. Beach traffic trying to stay out of traffic, and he's improving down toward the rail. Iron Drill is next, out wide in Bambino with a Nato Astray. Length and a half to Roan Mountain, who racing ahead of Bip Bip Full Power. Atacan is next, and dropping back is Silent Mischief. 23 and 1 for a rock solid opening quarter, and Brian's Avenue goes after, took a cab up front. These two, two and a half clear of Dry Land, who's now third, beach traffic. Odds on, he's in the clear and about to claim third. Gap of four to Pre Fontaine, then it's a Nato Astray. Iron Drill improves at the rail. Out widest is Bambino alongside Bip Bip. Full power with Roan Mountain trying to work home. Five in front of Atacan, and Silent Mischief is still far back. They've gone super fast for the level and distance as they went 45 and 2 for the opening half mile took a cab still the target Brian's Avenue dropping back a touch second beach traffic now moves to the leaders while three wide third from the back Bambino is underway for Marcos Manessis up into fourth Roan Mountain follows him under Reyes while tipping four or five deep after three quarters and one ten and four they wheel in took a cab has been in front from the outset but he's still got work to do he's an eighth of a mile from home and four on top Bambino and Roan Mountain taking up the slack second and third beach traffic did not kick on Jaramillo trying to get another Another 16th from Took a Cab, but Roan Mountain's got him. Here's Roan Mountain and Luis Reyes surging between horses to get up to win it. Bambino claims second, Took a Cab third, beats traffic in the fourth. A lot of pace on in the early stages of today's second race. It set it up for the closers as number five, Roan Mountain, didn't look that dissimilar to the favorite beach traffic in the sense that he was dropping off a turf effort that was just okay. He likes the main track, though, at least he did today, as he gets his first victory on the main track under Luis Reyes for John Kimmel and the Double Diamond Farm. Time for a commercial timeout. Still a lot of action to come. Don't go away.
No medication, no problem. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back now for race number three on the program. A field of three-year-old fillies around two turns on turf at one mile and for a price tag of $50,000. A field of six signed on. Off-time favorite was the four, Queen Field. And they're off. Good start at the inside for Dienda. Kimura has speed. Low Miss Hot Mess. And the Kentucky Invader is away in good shape. Third at the inside. Followed fourth by Glorious Gal. Then it's Queen Field. And the early trailer is Joyous Times. In the charge around the first turn, the advantage belongs to Dienda. She leads by a length and a half. Kimura second. Low Miss Hot Mess is at the inside now third. On from fourth in Glorious Gal, then Queen Field, and settled at the back is Joyous Time. She's last of all under Edgar Prado, but only about five lengths off the lead of Dienda. Dienda into the backstretch on top and tugging. Leads by a length over Kimura second. Low Miss Hot Mess is tripped out third at the inside. Followed fourth by Glorious Gal, then Queen Field, and still in no hurry at the back is Joyous Times. Quarter time was 24 and 1 as they had five furlongs from home. It's Dienda on top by a half a length. On the outside, Kimura now turns up the heat second. Low Miss Hot Mess has had a good run of it. She's third at the inside. Glorious Gal remains fourth. Queen Field remains fifth while trying to hunt racing room. And the trailer and now starting to lose ground is Joyous Times. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Dienda make, bids to make all. Leads by a length and a half. Kimura second. Low Miss Hot Mess to the clear third. Queenfield's going to slide through at the inside. Far outside in Glorious Gal. Then Joyous Times who's underway from the back. All six within two lengths here. Who do you like? Far outside. It's Joyous Times making a big run at the leaders. And Glorious Times is on the far outside. And she's sweeping up Joyous Times to take the lead. Trying to go with her is Glorious Gal. Dienda is third. 16th to go. She was last early. Early, but she's in front when it matters. Joyous times and Edgar Prado will win going away. Dienda's going to hold on for second over Glorious Gal third. Queen Field finish fourth. Number five, Joyous Times broke her maiden in hard-fought fashion last time out here this afternoon. I'd venture to say it came a little bit easier for the daughter of Kitten's Joy. She sat last under jockey Edgar Prado and made a big sweeping move, sweeping on by to get the victory here this afternoon. Trainer Steve Claseris and owner Charles Hallis. Joyous Times goes two for two, wins the third. We go to the fourth race now, maidens of the four-year-old and up variety. These are special weight runners at one mile. Scratch the three, Vinestone, a field of seven. The off-time favorites included the two, Bo Luminari, and the seven, Felix the Fox. And they're off. Good start from the center for Magical Mike, who heads off for the lead with Armando R moving to challenge. Here's Bo Luminare moving through at the inside, and Bo Luminare and Leparu to take the advantage as they link up with the main course. Now second is Derby Date, far outside. That's Felix the Fox in between horses and Armando R. Tucked in, newcomer unilateral. The two at the back are Magical Mike and New Hope Road. They make their way out of the chute and onto the main course. They went 23-3 and three for an opening quarter, and with the advantage, it's Bo Luminare in front by half a length. Derby Date, the New Orleans Invader is second. Felix the Fox is third. So the favorites are one, two, three to the half mile grounds. Improving at the inside and unilateral takes over fourth from Armando R, then New Hope Road and Magical Mike. There's half a mile left to journey with Bo Luminare still putting up the numbers. Bo Luminare leads by half a length. On the outside, Derby Date is there second. Racing in third is Felix the Fox, two and a half clear of unilateral. He's on from fourth. Back to fifth at Armando R. Nothing yet from New Hope Road or Magical Mike as Bo Luminare tries to string him out here. Under confident Leparu handling Bo Luminare with a kick at the quarter pole. He leads by three. Felix the Fox is trying to claim second. Derby Date is backpedaling. The rest are far back. Three quarters. 109 flat and Bo Luminare rolls along. He's open to five length lead now. Felix the Fox will only wonder what happened as he's clearly second. Derby Date is third but Bo Luminare in the midst of a gate to wire route. He'll win by Many. Felix the Fox is a clear second. The battle's for third. Bo Luminare in front. Felix the Fox second. New Hope Road did some work to get third. And fourth was Derby Day. A lot of key contenders in this race had some issues coming in. The seven hadn't been out in a long time. The four had never been at Gulfstream Park. The eight hadn't been out in a while. The only horse with recent form and recent racing was the two, Bo Luminare. And he takes advantage of that and wins easy here this afternoon. Humbling the competition under jockey Julian Leparu, trainer Rodolphe Brisse, and owner and Brenda Linda Heavey. We go to the fifth race now, the start of the Rainbow Six, a one-mile trip around the turf to get us underway today. Baden Claimers in for $50,000. Laurent Giroux rides number three, Midnight Bella. Scratch the eight, 11, and the alternates, 13 through 16. 
A field of 10, the favorite was the five, Memphis Showboat. And they're off. Toward the inside, it's Florado who gets the first call and fires to the top. Up on the outside, unexplainable, put into play early. Away in the top flight is Noble Enterprise, and the favorite is in the top flight as well, Memphis Showboat. Gaffleon looking for a home for her. She's in the three path now, and in tight between is Sienna Dream. Sienna Dream caused a bit of confusion there as they charged around the first turn. Unexplainable gets clear to lead by two and a half. Florado is there, second, strike magic on the outside, third. Now starting to settle fourth is Memphis Showboat, about four lengths off the leader. Two better than Unicorn Sally, who's next toward the rail. Noble Enterprise is mid-flight, dropped better than seven lengths off the lead. Then it's to the outside, C and a Dream. Crystalina down at the inside is third last. Second last is Midnight Bella, and Amalfi Queen is last of all as they head down the backstretch. 24-3 and three for the opening quarter. Unexplainable putting up the numbers. Leads by two. Strike Magic is second. Memphis Showboat's in the clear. Third up the outside. Florado is at the inside and fourth. Two better than a on-running unicorn, Sally. She's drawn within five of the lead for Mirage. Two in front of Noble Enterprise. Then it's C and a Dream. who's a bit green on the second turn as well. Amalfi Queen underway from the back. And now the trailer is Midnight Bella and Unexplainable. Still the target. Son Unexplainable off the top of the lane. Leads by two. Memphis Showboat with every opportunity. I'm the outside second unicorn sally third and on the outside from there with an eighth of a mile left to go unicorn sally tries to get the new leader memphis showboat who leads by two unicorn sally trying to charge into second from the inside and unexplainable in deep stretch memphis showboat responds to the class drop with a maiden diploma and two and a half lengths in hand second was unicorn sally close for third unexplainable florado and noble enterprise all across the course it can never be underestimated how big a drop it is from a maiden special weight to the maiden claiming ranks during the winter time at Gulfstream Park. The betters were certainly wise to that as number five Memphis Showboat drops out of a tough field last time out and gets the maiden diploma in just her second racing start. Trained by Jorge Abreu for Steve Lehman, Michael Kisber and 10 strike racing. Handled perfectly by Tyler Gaffleone. Memphis Showboat is an easy winner as the public pick to start the Rainbow Six. Back now for race number six on the program. The start of today's late pick five. One mile on turf. Scratch the one driven by Thunder. A field of seven. The favorite was the seven. Far away kitten. And uh, they're off. Toward the inside, Discovered broke the line well. Here's Sublime Appeal moving to challenge. And Hieroglyphics away in the top flight. He'll land third. Working over to be fourth is Golden Decision with fifth title down at the inside. Second last is the race favorite Faraway Kitten, and the trailer is Ambassador Jim. Around the first turn they go, separated by five lengths. Sublime Appeal and Rajiv Mirage on top three parts of a length. Now make it a length over Discovered, who races in second. At the inside, fifth title claims third. Hieroglyphics is a bit wide while moving into third. In between horses and Golden Decision, the two at the back are Faraway Kitten and Ambassador Jim. 23 and 4 for the opening quarter speed as they race down the backstretch. Discovered is now challenging Sublime Appeal for the top. Three wide and hieroglyphics on from the rail in fifth title. In the two path goes Golden Decision. The two at the back are still Ambassador Jim and Far Away Kitten. No change in the plot here as Sublime Appeal maintains the advantage. He's been well rationed on the top end, but he did go a 46 and one half mile. So he moves into the far turn, trying to catch another breather. Three wide. Hieroglyphics is on the go down at the inside in fifth title. Discovered begins to drop back this golden decision, knifing between horses for Paco. Hieroglyphics trying to close the door on him. Out wide on the course, an ambassador, Jim, far away kittens in big time traffic as they reach the top of the stretch. Hieroglyphics on the outside of Sublime Appeal for the top. Sublime Appeal is fighting hard. He's still in front. Hieroglyphics on the outside is second. Far away Kitten and down the center. Golden Decision coming on with Ambassador Jim on the stand side. Here comes Golden Decision taking on the top duo. Sublime Appeal is so game, but Golden Decision is on to the front. Golden Decision will win it. Far away Kitten claims second. I think Sublime Appeal held on for third in 134 and one. Number six, Golden Decision got a perfect pace flow and a good trip by Jockey Paco Lopez. And the veteran son of Skipshot kicked on for a mild upset. 
trained by Peter Walder for Walder Racing and Royal Bamboo Racing. It was Golden Decision to get the decision in race six. Taking nothing away from the winner of this race, but how game was the three sublime appeal? He was hooked every step of the stretch and still fought on to get a minor placing. We go now to the seventh race, the start of the late pick four, six furlongs to journey claimers, which have not won a race in six months' time. They're in for $8,000. Santiago Gonzalez rides in seven diamond majesty. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. Good start from between horses for Karma King down at the inside sighted. Sleeping Giant has speed. Diamond Majesty away in the top flight. On from fifth and tip sheet. Second last to get underway. Passionate Hachi and Valdaco trails. Five eights left to run. The favorites are last and second last. And Sleeping Giant has the lead. On the inside and sighted a joint second. Karma King looks for room. He's trying to secure the three path under LeBron. Four wide Diamond Majesty. Racing from fifth and tip sheet. Sixth is Passionate Hachi and Valdaco is the trailer. 22 and 2 for a contested opening quarter speed. With the advantage, it's still Sleeping Giant, but only narrowly. On the outside, Karma King from the rail incited. Diamond Majesty, Passionate Hachi, tip sheet. Who do you like here? Even Valdaco running home from the back. He's got horse, but no place to go. There's a wall of runners as Valdaco looks to thread the needle. Sighted tries to close the door. On the outside, and Karma King to take the lead. It's Karma King in the stretch drive with the advantage. Now Valdaco tries to shake free. Sighted battles on the inside with the tip sheet and passionate Hachi in deep stretch. It's now Karma King to the front. On the outside and Valdaco takes a late surge, but Karma King will win it at seven to one. Karma King by two in the end. Valdaco up second, sighted third, tip sheet, finished fourth. Some interesting trips in today's seventh race and the horse who got the trip that he really wanted was the winner, number six, Karma King, who kicked on late under a nice ride from Victor Lebron for imaginary stables and trainer Elizabeth Dobles. Karma King beats Valdaco. He got the trip he wanted. Trip was key here. Karma King, a minor upset in race number seven. To the eighth race now, start of the late pick three. One mile on turf. Claimers at a price tag of $16,000. Javier Castellano rides number 11. Is adorable. Aida scratched the 12 and the 14. It's a field of 12. The off time favorite was number eight, Avenida Manana. To a clean and level beginning. Avenida Manana, the favorite, is the first to break the line on the far outside. Put position moves into contention. Driving throughout the rail, that spicy Nelly away in fourth. Hop on the bus, Gus. Out very wide is Isadora Balaida. She's trying to get over as Venezuelan Forever occupies the three path and Bahama Kittens in the two lane. Length and a half back to Sweet Story, who's mid-flight and only six lengths off the lead. Jess Sassy's at her inside. Third last, while a bit wide, paint the corners. Second last, Cachetora, and the trailer is Vitame. Around the first turn they go through a 23 and four opening quarter. Spicy Nelly and Santiago Gonzalez on top by a length put position is second. Avenida Manana gets the spot she wants, pocketed up third at the inside. Followed fourth by Venezuelan Forever, then out wide and Isadora Balaida. Hop on the bus, Gus is toward the rail, black and pink colors about four lengths behind. In between runners is Sweet Story. They're followed by Jess Sassy and on the far outside paint the corners. From between that duo and Bahama Kitten, a gap of two to Vitami and now the trailer is Cachatora. Into the far turn they go, 47 and four for an opening half mile. Put position now goes on the attack to try to take the lead. Spicy Nelly fights back second. Avenida Manana will have every opportunity from there. She's third, looking to get off the inside. Back to fourth in Venezuelan forever, sliding through in sweet story. Three quarters, 111 and two. They're at the top of the stretch. Avenida Manana loose and charging at the top duo with Spicy Nelly fighting on. Spicy Nelly for a narrow lead. And Avenida Manana let go by Paco. Put position is next. Sweet story is on late in deep stretch. Avenida Manana surges just to the lead. Sweet story, put position. It's a photo finish. That got really close. Avenida Manana collared put position, but then Sweet Story surged on. Picture time at 135 and four. Number eight, Avenida Manana had every right to kick on with it inside the final eighth of a mile. She did to a degree, but not with as much authority as we thought she would. She did still get this the narrow decision, however, under jockey Baca Lopez for trainer Dave Fox and Sandra New. Heck of a run from the 13, put position to get second, ahead of the nine, Sweet Story, who ran third. Let's take a commercial break. Still to come, the Wednesday feature race. Don't go away. Paisley Tipton is bringing the heat to Miami with a red-hot catalog of selected two-year-olds in training. Star graduates include grade one winners, Audible, Bella Fina, Dream Tree, Mia Mischief, More Spirit, and Nyquist. Plus, rising stars like Breeders' Cup champion, four-wheel drive, Nadal, and Independence Hall.
top juveniles by the nation's hottest sires. Selected sales, superior results. The Phasing Tipton Gulfstream Sale, April 1st in Hallandale Beach, Florida. Where will you be? And they're off! She's second in the two path. Ground on her inside. Back now for race number nine on the program. First half of the late Daily Double. Allowance horses at a six furlong trip. Scratch the three, just ain't right. Field of four. Favorites for two, Baccarat fashion. And four, day by day. And they're off. Slow beginning for Sean's idea. Quick beginning for Day by Day and WW Fitzy, and they're put into play early. Baccarat Fashion gets away third, about two and a half lengths off the in-battle duo, and the trailer is Sean's idea. Down the backstretch they go. The advantage to W.W. Fitzy, the Illinois-bred daughter of well-positioned, is indeed that, as she's front and center with a length and a half advantage. Day by day is second. Now Alvarado's going to have to go three wide on Baccarat fashion. The good news is he's in the clear. The bad news is he's giving ground, and the trailer is Sean's idea. 22-3 and three for the opening quarter. Around the far turn they go. Day by day, now up to take on W.W. Fitzy for the top. Baccarat Fashion's going to have to do a bit better than that. Third, about a length and a half off the leader. And Sean's idea is at the back as W.W. Fitzy is fighting hard. Top of the lane, W.W. Fitzy turns first with the lead. On the outside, day by day has every opportunity to get by. Sean's idea tries to catch Baccarat Fashion for third. Final eighth of a mile. Here's day by day lifting up on the outside. W.W. Fitzy, some kind of game here. And W.W. Fitzy has the lead again day by day. One more time. She didn't get by. W.W. Fitzy turned her away. Second was day by day, then back a rat fashion and Sean's idea. Upset win in the feature race of the afternoon. The Illinois bred daughter of well-positioned number one, W.W. Fitzy, took charge from the outset and turned away the challenge of day by day, getting a 9-2 success under jockey Marcos Manessis winning trainer Scott Becker and owner Bill Steerance. WW Fitzy beats day by day. They were well clear of Baccarat fashion and Sean's idea. Let's go to the 10th and final race. Maiden claimers on turf at a $16,000 level. Scratch the 140, a field of 10. Race favorites included the 8 Crypto Gold and the 11 Friendly Fellow. And runners away. Long ships away quickly toward the inside. Far outside, Friendly Fella using his quick first gear to get over from the high draw. Friendly Fella will cross and clear in the charge to the first turn. A wall of pursuers, including Castellette in the two path at the rail and long ships. A bit wide is right on Kid to race about three lengths off the lead with Brahe cutting the corner out the rail. In between horses, the gray traffic trouble, who's two better than Keep Marching with Morning Tice, then Crypto Gold second last, and Bella's Fella last of all behind a robust opening quarter of 23 and 2. Friendly Fella takes no prisoners to the backstretch run. He opens a five length lead on long ships from second. On the outside, right on Kid is now third together with Castellette. They're two better than Traffic Trouble the Gray. Brahe is down toward the inside, about six or seven lengths off this breakaway leader. Then it's back to the outside and keep marching. Morning Tice is toward the rail. And then at the back are Crypto Gold and far back to Bella's Fella. 46 and 2 for the opening half mile. That's a big time second quarter. And the first quarter was fast. So Friendly Fella letting it all hang loose around the four attorneys, five in front. Trying to string him out behind him as traffic trouble gets started. Crypto Gold in the gold colors far outside. He's up into a contending spot, but Friendly Fella's still going after three quarters and 110 flat. They arrive at the top of the stretch, and Friendly Fella less than a quarter of a mile from home and five on top. Crypto Gold trying to take up the slack, but he had to cover a lot of ground off the corner. He's into second, but time is ticking away, and Friendly Fella is still there. Crypto Gold bridging the gap. Will time run out on him? It appears it will, as Friendly Fella still in front. Friendly Fella by three. Crypto Gold gaining, but not quickly enough. Friendly Fella rolled all the way. Friendly Fella down the road, gate to wire under Crypto Gold, who was second in 140 and four. Number 11, Friendly Fella ran one heck of a race here this afternoon, going faster in the second quarter than he did the first, but going quick in the first quarter too. All in all, it was a huge performance from the son of Hear No Evil, who's a maiden no more. Iro Rendon must have known what he had underneath him as he was aboard for the winning ride. Kathleen O'Connell and owners Kathleen O'Connell in the double T racing stable. 
Friendly Fella beats Crypto Gold in the finale. Multiple winning tickets sold in the Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six has guaranteed money tomorrow $400,000. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. As always, we're back tomorrow, right back in it, with 10 more races on Thursday. Our first post, 1 p.m. Eastern, and we'll see you there. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Tell you, Jack, I'm so tired. Oh, my aching back. Let's hit the hay.